IUI cycles uh, used to be the principle, the mainstay of infertility treatment, both for female and male infertility. I'm old enough to remember the days when over 90% of our cycle activity at CHR were IUI cycles and IVF cycles represented less than 10%. But in those days, pregnancy rates between IUI cycles and IVF cycles were very similar. And so in those days, it made a lot of sense to start with IUI cycles. And if they did not work, or if there was a reason not to use them, like if a woman has clogged tubes, it doesn't make sense to do an IUI because egg and sperm will never meet, then you went to IVF. But things have changed over almost 35 years of IVF. Uh, in the early days, IVF uh, cycles gave single-digit pregnancy rates. Today, IVF cycles are very, very successful in their pregnancy rates. Obviously, things depend on age of patients, on other circumstances. And it may still make sense in a young woman in her 20s who has open tubes to try a few IUI cycles, uh, particularly if the problem is that the male has a relatively low sperm count, so bringing the sperm closer to the egg, to the fallopian tubes through an IUI may allow patients to get pregnant quickly, even with IUI. But in general, the cost-effectiveness curve and the clinical effectiveness consideration has dramatically changed because today on the average an IVF cycle will give you at least three times the pregnancy chance of an IUI cycle and that means that per treatment time unit which is usually one menstrual cycle the pregnancy chance is three times as high for an IVF than for an IUI. Now, most patients who come to a fertility center for treatment have already tried a long time to get pregnant and otherwise wouldn't be in the fertility center. And they usually are anxious to get pregnant relatively quickly. So why expose them to a second best treatment that will take them three times as long? 